In Lesson 7, we're going to continue looking at the useful apps in Windows 8, including Calendar, Maps, News, Sports, Weather, Travel, Music, Bing, and a lot more. The next useful app I want to talk about is the Calendar app. It's right here. It's one of those double-wide tiles. I'll click on that. That loads up the calendar. You'll see the current date is highlighted. You can move from month to month with these little buttons right here. There's February, March, or you can go backwards. You can right-click pretty much anywhere, and you'll get these options down here. You can see the day calendar. Right There's today. There's tomorrow. You can see a weekly calendar or the monthly calendar. If you want to jump to today, you can click on the today button. It'll take you right there. And to put a new appointment on your calendar, you can click on the new button. Or you can just click somewhere on here. Like, let's say we got an appointment later today. All right, I'll click on the 24th. Okay, it brings up details. Type in sample appointment. All right, you can put the date and time in here. Let's say it's for, uh, you know, 15 minutes from now. All right, save it. And there, it got saved right there. Same sample appointment. It's straddling two days because I said the default length was an hour. So it's actually going from this date onto that date. Want to edit the details? Well, just click on it right there. And that opens it right up. You can type in some notes here. Right? These are some notes for the appointment. And there's other options down here as well. How often you can make it repeat. You can set up a reminder, what your status is, whether it's private, and so on. We'll talk more about some of these options in our future classes. And keep in mind, once you sign in with your Gmail account or your Hotmail account, those calendars from those services are also going to come into here, too. We'll talk more about that in future lessons. For now, I'm going to close the calendar app. Next, let's talk about the Maps app. I like the Maps app. Now, in order to use the Maps app, it helps if you have Allow Location Services on. That allows the Maps app to use your current location for stuff like directions and what's around you. I'm going to hit Allow. Now, as soon as I do that, after a moment, it pretty much homes in right on my location. That's my neighborhood right there, which is kind of creepy. It uses my IP address, which is an address that every computer on the Internet has, to try and pinpoint your current location. Now, there's little buttons over here. You can zoom in. You can zoom back out. All right, see that? I'm in Amherst, which is just north of Buffalo. And you can click and drag to scroll. There's Buffalo, New York, right down there. See that? Click on the diamond right here. Okay, that's close. That's my street, but not my address. So it's very close. And, of course, to do stuff, well, we need the menu. So right-click. There's the menu. And, of course, touch users, just swipe up from the bottom. There's show traffic, where it attempts to show the different traffic. See? A little bit of a congestion here. This is clear. All right, right-click, map style. You can go road view or satellite view, or aerial view, it's called. All right, this is really neat. If you zoom in, you can see all the different houses. I'm going to go back to road view. Okay. Right-click. Directions. Where do you want to go to? Well, my location, let's say, um, I don't know, uh, Hamburg, New York. And then hit Go. And that will get directions. See? There's the road map. See, it gives you the route and the turn-by-turn -turn directions are right across the top here. And you can scroll. Now, this makes much more sense on your tablet or your phone. If you are in the car, it will give you the driving directions here. To get rid of that, just right-click and then come down here where it says Clear Map. So that's the Map app. It's pretty straightforward. Next, I just want to make a brief mention of the Photos app. Now, I'm going to spend a lot of time in future lessons going over the Photos app, but the Photos app shows you all the different pictures on your system, in your pictures library, your SkyDrive photos, anything you might have saved in your SkyDrive account. We'll talk about SkyDrive in a few minutes. All your Facebook photos. Flickr photos if you have a Flickr account, and your devices. So, for example, if you connect a camera via USB cable or your phone, it'll show you all the photos on those devices, too. Okay? And if you click on one of these libraries, 
it'll open up the library, but there's nothing in there right now. So, again, it's not going to show it to you. How can we put a picture in our picture library real quick? Well, you can grab something off the web if you want to. All right, go back to the Start menu. And uh, let's go to Internet Explorer. And uh, let's go to uh, my homepage here, 599cd.com. Whoops, I can't type today. Dot com. And we can grab any one of these pictures. I think my picture's on here. Let's go to my page right there. Oh, there I am. Right-click, Save to Picture Library. See that? Now, I've saved this in my picture library. So if I come back now, remember upper left corner, or swipe in from the left, I can click there. That's how you switch between these. Now, oh, look there. I'm in the pictures library now. I can click on it and view the pictures in my picture library. Right, Click on the picture to see it full screen if you want. And yes, that's me. I don't wear ties often. I think I took this picture after a wedding. So I'm like, oop, I got a, I got a suit and tie on. I got to take a picture for the website. I think I, I only wear suits and ties when I go to uh, weddings and funerals. But that's the photo app. And it's, it's pretty straightforward, but um, it gives you the opportunity to go through all the photos in there. Now, I don't want to see my face popping up here all the time. Okay, this live tile will go through all the different photos that you have in your photo library. I'm not that narcissistic. I don't want to look at myself. So I'm going to right-click on that, and I'm going to say turn live tile off. Okay, now I'm just going to see photos. And it's not going to keep flipping between all the different pictures in here. And while I'm at it, I'm going to make it smaller. Okay, maybe, uh, I don't know. The finance app, I'm not going to talk about the finance app today. As you can see, it'll show you the Dow and it'll show you your stocks and stuff. I'm going to actually get rid of that for now. I'm going to unpin that from the start menu. And then, uh, let's see, make the weather app. Uh, let's move the weather app over here. The sports app, I'm going to shrink down. Try and make this stuff fit better. There we go. Okay, see how that works? You can turn off the live tiles if you don't want this stuff to keep coming up. Like Bing, for example. Or the travel. Travel's kind of neat. Sometimes it shows you photos of, of weird places. Okay, next up, the news app right there. Pretty straightforward. All right, goes to the different news stories. You can scroll left and right. I'm just using the scroll wheel on my mouse. You can scroll with the bar on the bottom or, of course, your finger. If you want to see a certain category, just click right here. Here's technology. These are all technology stories. All right, you can scroll through here. See something interesting, just click on it. And it'll load right up. See? Very straightforward. If you right-click, you get a menu on the top here. There's Bing Daily, there's My News. And with My News, you can add different sections of what you're interested in. All right, type in a news topic. Let's say uh, I'll type in Android. Okay, and it pulls up stuff on Android. I just made my own news section. See that? Whatever you're interested in. You want to type in, uh, you know, Mars or the Yankees or whatever topics you want. Okay? Right-click. You can also go to different sources. Okay, what sources are you interested in? If you only want news from CNN or NBC News. Okay? You can pick whatever source you want. And it will give you just news from that source. So the news app is actually pretty versatile. Okay, when you're done, I just back out here. Back out, back out. And, of course, we can close the app. So that's news. And, again, if you don't want this as a live tile, you can right-click and turn the live tile off. I like this as a live tile. Okay, sports is right here. Very similar to news. Okay, right-click. Favorite teams whatever league you're interested in, okay? Let's say I want uh, favorite teams, okay? I'm going to add a team, Yankees. Yeah, I don't want the hate mail from Boston fans, okay? You can add more if you want to. Let's see if it's got the Buffalo Bandits. Oh, it doesn't have the Buffalo Bandits. That's a lacrosse team, a local lacrosse team. I, I've been a Bandits fan for, for a couple of years now, all right? But as you can see, there's the Buffalo Bills and Sabres. I'll add the Sabres, Okay? All right, when you're done, just hit Cancel, and there you go. You get their stats right there. Okay, click on Sabres, for example, and it gives you more information. All right, Alt F4, I'll close that app. 
The weather app is right down here. It's kind of nice. Now you want to let weather use your location, so I'll say allow. Because once you give it your location, guess what? It brings up your weather, your forecast. Right now, yes, 2 degrees Fahrenheit. Thank you very much. Love Buffalo weather. Feels like minus 11. That's something called wind chill. For those of you who live in warmer climates, you might not know what wind chill is. That's what it feels like on your skin. It's really cold outside. You wouldn't get me going out tonight. Okay, there's your five-day forecast. You can scroll to the right. There's the hourly forecast. Now, here's something I don't like about the weather app. Watch this. I'm using the, the scroll wheel on my mouse, and as I scroll to the right or pull down, look at that. It stops here because it gets stuck on this little area. See that? Now my mouse scroll wheel is using this. So I don't like that at all. you got to move your mouse away from that window. Click up here, and then you can go past it. Oh, now it's still not working. There it goes. Okay, see that? So you sometimes have to even just grab the scroll bar to get past it. That's a bit of an annoyance. So someone at Microsoft needs to fix that. All right, but you can continue past it. There's different maps. All right, your Doppler maps and your precipitation forecast, your airport impacts, all this stuff, historical weather. See, it's nice here three, four months out of the year. I love Buffalo in the summer. In the winter, <laughs> not so much. Okay, and of course you get an advertisement over here for Office 365. So, yeah, they throw some advertising in here. I haven't seen too much of it, though. So that's the weather app. And now that Windows knows my location, the weather app is actually going to be pretty useful. It'll show me my current weather and what the forecast is. Okay, the Bing app pretty much just uses the Bing search engine. Here it is. It's kind of pretty. All right, and you can type in whatever you're looking for up here. Here's some stuff that's popular right now. All right, let's say I'm looking for Star Trek. Okay, and you get some stuff down here. There's the new movie coming out, or just click on one of these, or just press Enter. All right, and here's current stuff on Star Trek. All right, you got some images, you got news about the director, and so on. All right, you can scroll to the right. Okay. So that works. That's pretty pretty straightforward. You can do this through the web browser too. If you just go to Bing.com, okay, or Google has very similar results. These little boxes pop up here with information on the background photo. See this stuff here? Click on it. Right, rare king cheetah wasn't photographed in the wild till '74. All right, they give you some cool tidbits on what the picture of the day is. All right, that's the Bing app. So we'll close that. The travel app has interesting tidbits of information on popular travel destinations. Feel free to come in here and play with this. I'm not going to waste any time on it. There's Grand Canyon Park. You can scroll across here, get information on going to Rome, write some panoramas, magazine articles, and so on. If you're interested in any of these things, just click on it. Let's say uh, Tahiti. It brings up information on Tahiti. All right, an overview information, the weather. Right, flight information, you can find flights. So if you do a lot of traveling, the travel app is pretty neat. Again, I'm not going to waste a lot of time in class on it, but feel free to come in here and play with this. The music app is kind of neat. The music app you can use to play your own music, or you can connect to Microsoft's service and stream free music, which means you're playing it right over the web. Now, as soon as I open this up, and you'll see this from time to time, there's a new version of this app available. Now, they're constantly updating all these apps all the time. So if you want to get the latest version of it, just click here. It loads up the Microsoft Store. And as soon as I come in here, look, it says App Updates. Fifteen apps have updated versions available, all these different apps. And they're constantly updating these. All right, so check or uncheck whichever apps you do or do not want to update. And you can just use the left click, right, and then just hit the Install button. Okay, and you can see here it opens up the installing apps. It's downloading them off the web right now. It's pretty quick. It only usually takes a minute or two. All right, see, there goes the installing. Pulls them down. These apps are really tiny. They're not like old classic Windows applications that have, you know, megabytes and megabytes of information. These are real... Real small, um, fast apps. They come down real quick. See, and whether you use them or not all the time, if it says there's a recommended update, you should consider updating it only because sometimes they fix problems or security holes or bugs. All right, now we can go back. 
Okay, we can exit the store and go back to the music app now. And there we go. Now there's all kinds of stuff you can do in here. You can just click on one of these featured artists. You can make a playlist. And again, I'll have a future lesson that goes over this app in a lot more detail. But for now, let's just find an artist and play some music. I'll hit find an artist. Type in your artist up here. I'm going to type in Rush, one of my favorite groups. Now, Rush doesn't show up down here in the search results. It's showing you other things that have the word Rush in them. But guess what? If I hit the search button over here, it finds them. Okay, now, Xbox Music, want to listen for free. All you need to do is sign up with Xbox or sign into an existing Xbox profile. Don't worry, you don't need a credit card. Okay, let's sign in. It's going to connect you to an Xbox account. Okay, it's got my information here. I'd like to receive information about music. That's fine. I'll just hit accept. It's not going to charge you anything. It's just adding an Xbox account onto your existing Microsoft account. And it's giving me what's called a gamer tag. Right? Undocking Might82. Save this in case you decide you want to uh, use it for an Xbox account. I'll hit OK. But now I can come in here. You see in the upper right hand corner it's signing me in. All right, and there, I found some Rush. Look at that. There's Tom Sawyer. I can click on it. And if this computer that I was using had speakers and sound attached to it, it would start playing this right now, and I can click on the play button here. But alas, unfortunately, I did not set up sound drivers on this computer because I didn't think I'd be needing them. So, trust me, Tom Sawyer would be playing right now, and you'd be hearing it if I had sound, but I don't. So that's, in a nutshell, how you use the Xbox Music app. And there's all kinds of extra things you can do with it. And again, we'll cover all those advanced features in a future lesson. But today, I just wanted to give you a quick overview of how to get in here and play some music. All right, so let's close that app. And we're back to the Start menu.